My brothers and sisters, thank you for giving up your time to watch video 15 in the series Heart to Soul Inspirational Short Videos. And the title of this video might interest you. And it's called Discipleship. Is there a price to pay? Based on my own life's experiences, I endorse what the great Reverend David Watson once said when I was in Clandidno in 1984, when he ran the most wonderful seminar on forgiveness. And he wrote an incredible book called The Cost of Discipleship. Of course, David died of cancer, but he did incredible work in York, uniting people who wanted to express their love of God in a diverse way, but he paid the price. Negativism came from within the hallowed fraternity of devout Christian, who were honoring the letter of God's law and who were reluctant to embrace the spirit of oneness and openness. What I would say to you is this. It takes a lot of courage to honor your heart, particularly when you come from a background such as mine, where as a nurse for many years, I was programmed to always come from the head in dealing with people's lives, where decisions had to be made, and where people trusted you to make the right decision in relation to life and death issues. But coming back to the price of discipleship, I have an example to share with you which at the time was quite discouraging for my soul, where I embraced deep-rooted negativity and anxiety triggered by well-meaning Christians. And I endorse what Gandhi said, I like your Christ but not your Christians, because your Christians are not like your Christ. What did he mean? Well. I encountered some opposition myself because coming here eight years ago in faith, and it was a journey of faith with Brother Rob, we came not knowing what God was going to do or how he would use us. But of course, looking back on the eight years, we now realize that God had a plan and the vision in 2006 to 12 wonderful students of mine from Lord Kitumi through St. Francis was to reach out to all God's children and restore them through love. And again in 2008 to establish a lay monastic online community for men and women of different faiths. Face the mystical heart of God as lay monastics living in the modern world. While living here for eight years, I was blessed when they invited me to use the church next door to run my retreats from because that way I could take more than 12 people and at least twice a month I would use the Saturday to run a retreat that was very well attended and of course four years ago on Good Friday we held a beautiful retreat working with the Christ energy it was deeply moving and inspirational but towards the end as we were all hugging one another and saying goodbye one of the friends of our community, Brother Ron, stood up and said, I would like to chant the wonderful Maitreya chant. So we all said, fine. And all 30 of us stood in a circle holding each other. Both I and Sister Teresa were there quietly, almost falling asleep because we were tired. And all of a sudden, Brother Ron went, whoa, with this incredible voice of his. And the chant was absolutely beautiful. But what we didn't realize was the lady who does the flowers for the church was in the next room and she nearly dropped the vase. And of course she was clearly disturbed by what had happened and went and told one of the ministers who is retired but who's perceived in the village as a little Hitler. And of course she got her posse of well-meaning Christians together and within a few weeks we had a visit from the minister who in his opinion he endorsed all we were doing but he said he had to abide by the feelings of the majority bearing in mind that they're all between 60 and 90 and there's about 15 of them that attend on a regular basis on a Sunday but the decision was that I was no longer invited to run 
the type of retreats I was running there because in their opinion I wasn't a Christian. Now that really shook me because I am a Christian but I don't subscribe to the narrow-mindedness of what is being portrayed by many Christians of a vengeful, fearful God. And as an ex-nursing monk of, within the Catholic Church, I spent almost 55 years of my life living in fear of God. And I came to despise the falseness and people say that they loved God but yet in their heart they were alienated from God. Strange paradox. But the cost of discipleship is real. It's tangible. And in my case, my ego wanted revenge. By golly did I want revenge. I was spitting feathers. I was so foolish. But I was wounded. So I came into prayer and I shed many tears because I was rejected in the community. My name, well, of course, was run into the mud. I was called a mad monk. I was this, that, and the other. I wasn't a Christian. I certainly wasn't welcome. And the values I represented, that of Sananda Jesus, the Ascended Master, the Barefoot Galilean, were alien to them. They were closed. And I was uncharitable. And I asked God to forgive me. So what I was guided to do in prayer was to give a blessing. So I wrote a little card and I remembered St. Teresa of Calcutta of how she was treated by the Catholic Church when as headmistress of a private boarding school for, for girls in Calcutta she found it very difficult to cope with the poor people dying at this posh boarding school run by the nuns. So she asked the Archbishop if she could be released to set up a community and he said no. And out walking one day, she looked forlorn and distressed, and it was a Hindu priest who came up to her and said, What is the matter with you, Teresa? And she told him, and he said, You can use my temple. And that became the cornerstone, the foundation house, for St. Teresa's Missionaries of Charity. How wonderful is that? But she paid the price, as I did here. And even to this day, I'm still aware of backstabbing from well-meaning Christians and it hurts and recently we had a visit from the new Methodist minister on New Year's Eve to say that his congregation were disturbed by a recent announcement in our local paper saying interfaith service to be held on the of January 2011 clearly that was not our intention we didn't put it in for the Methodist church we put it as saying at the monastery of St. Francis, well, there was an uproar. You can imagine they were seething. But however, we explained to him, I thought it was a house of God open to all God's children. And interfaith means that we are welcoming brothers and sisters of different faith traditions to a service here, not next door where they're not welcome, but here because we all love and embrace the same God. And he agreed. So I said to him, well, what's the problem? He said, it's them. I said, well, who are them? And he said, it's the well-meaning believers who go there. And I happened to say to him, are you happy? And he said, no. I said, why not? Because I can't be what I was called and ordained to be. And I said, well, why don't you take your power back and do something about it? And he was fearful. So today, if you honour your heart and embrace the Divine Oneness and follow the path that resonates with your heart, and in my case as a lay monastic, be prepared for rejection. Because my family have rejected me with the exception of one sister who has become a Buddhist and my family are devout Irish Catholics. But they see me as losing it completely. And I feel sad for them. I do pray for them, but I won't engage with their nonsense. So what I'm saying to you, my brothers and sisters, is it is better not to seek revenge. It is better to hold those that have in prayer and remember we're not alone. Thank you.